When the players, uh, student athletes arrive, we'll go straight to questions. Please raise your hand so a microphone can be brought to you. And prior to each question, remember please to identify yourself by name and affiliation. And when you can, address your question to a particular player, student athlete. Um, we'll get going when they will arrive. Thanks. Okay, we'll get right to questions for Caitlin Clark and Kate Martin. Kyle? Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. Um, kind of want to hear both of your answers on this one. Just what are your initial thoughts on, on watching West Virginia? Looks like they play a pretty aggressive style of defense, both half court and full court. Just kind of curious to hear what you guys have seen from watching film on them. Yeah, I, they're, they hang their hat on defense. Um, they're a really good defensive team, and they try to turn you over um, full court press. And we've seen a lot of teams do that to us this year. But yeah, they're definitely going to try to speed you up and want to turn you over. And so uh, that's how they um, get into their offense, really, is they turn defense into offense. So we're just going to have to stay composed and handle their pressure. Yeah, like Kate said, they're going to want to turn us over. And that's exactly what they did at Princeton last night in the third quarter. And I think that was kind of the point in which the game changed. They're one of those teams that really feeds off of turnovers. One turn turnover can turn into five for for a team, so um, I think that's going to be the biggest thing is taking care of the ball, and um, we expect them to play some zone, play some man. Uh, that's what we're prepped for, and um, it'll be a good battle. They have good guards on their team. They're long. They're athletic. Um, so I think the biggest thing for us is going to be taking care of the ball. Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. Caitlin, uh, you know, you spoke a little bit on the guard play from WVU. Um, a big part of that is J.J. Quinterly. Um, what have you seen from them as a whole, but also on her in specific as a player and a defender? Yeah, I think their guard play is, is really where they thrive offensively, and um, that's going to be something that we really focus on. I think, you know, J.J. specifically is somebody that really is going to put her head down and want to get to the basket, and um, I think that goes for all their guards, and that's kind of, you know, what they hang their hat on. They're capable shooters, but I think they want to drive first and create opportunities there. Um, so we'll throw a few different things at them, and, um, you know, they're a really good team. They run some really good stuff. Um, you know, we've been prepping for him for a few days, going through their actions, and um, I think that'll be the biggest thing. And obviously, she's a great defender, too. They're all good defenders, uh, one through five, and being able to handle the pressure and not l let one turnover turn into multiple turnovers and then start stacking up. And I think just staying patient and running our offense and running our stuff will be really good. Uh, in the middle back, Scott. Uh, or, I'm sorry, go ahead. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Um, from both you guys, just dealing with the emotions of the last home game. This is going to be it. Oh, geez. <laughs> Why'd you say that? No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it's definitely bittersweet. And um, I feel really grateful to have extended my time into six years and I've gotten to play a lot of games out here on this court. And I feel really grateful for that. And so uh, just staying in the moment and, you know, we can uh, – deal with that after the game. But first, we're obviously focused on um, getting a victory tomorrow and um, just enjoying every single moment with our teammates, you know, trying to have fun out there and uh, smile a lot and just play some basketball. But yeah, I, th I don't think it'll hit me until, you know, the season's really over. But, uh, you know, I feel lucky that we've gotten two extra home games on our home court here. Yeah, what she said, I would echo all of that. And I think the biggest thing is just being grateful. Like, how lucky are we that we get to play two March Madness games on our home court in front of our fans and never letting that opportunity pass us by. And like Kate said, like, it's all business. We're going to be locked in. Like, I don't think any of us five seniors are really going to be thinking, like, oh, my gosh, this is our last game. I think it's, you know, the environment is too competitive. You're wanting to win so hard. That's not really what you're focused on. And like she said, I feel like that is something that will hit you either after the game or once the season ends. And um, yeah, but I think more than anything, like we need to use the crowd to our advantage. Having 15,000 people that want to cheer for you, that's, that's huge. Thanks. In the middle. Hi, Scott Doctorman with The Athletic. This question's for Caitlin. Uh, to your left is uh, Kate Martin, who you've played with for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. what, what's, how has she impacted your career at Iowa? Mm -hmm. in, in what ways? And then also Iowa, University of Iowa Athletics. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I think the thing about Kate is like, 
she's been somebody that's been here with me like through it all. And it's kind of crazy to think about like when I first stepped on campus, Kate was like already a captain. She was in her junior season. Like she was two years older than me. She was somebody I admired and looked up to. And then somebody that became one of my best friends. And I think everybody in our locker room and even the coaches would say she's somebody that we all learn from every single day. Somebody that always has our back. Somebody that is one of the best leaders, you know, any of us have ever been around. And I think the coaches would even say that. I feel like the coaches have even learned a lot from Kate and how she goes about her business and what she does on a day to day basis. But um, like, I don't know, like I'll miss I'll miss playing with her. Um, I mean, she's just somebody that has really been there for me. She's somebody that's wired the same way as me. And at times that means me and Kate butt heads, but at the end of the day, we know like how much we love each other. We get step off the court and it doesn't matter. Um, we just make each other better. But I think, I think for myself, the thing that I'm going to miss the most is just being around her every day as somebody that's one of her best friends. She's one of mine. And, um, it's been fun to see her evolution as a basketball player. Um, I think, you know, to me, she's a pro. She's somebody that should be drafted. She's somebody that can offer a lot to a professional organization and, if not, she'll make a really good coach one day. So I've been very lucky over the course of my four years. Thanks, Kayla. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. This is for both of you. Um, Harrison and Quinterly on WVU's side, both top 15 in the nation in steals per game, respectively. Mm -hmm. Does that guard play remind you of anybody in the Big Ten, or do they seem to pose a completely different threat? No, I definitely – I feel like with their press and their pressure, kind of reminds me of Penn State a little bit. Um, but it definitely reminds me of Georgia a little bit from last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, they like to go back into their a zone after their press sometimes. And so uh, I don't know. I, I just think they're really active, and they like to put ball pressure. And they just kind of want to get in your face and intimidate you. And uh, we're just going to have to really stay composed and handle that. And, you know, and if people are doing that to you, then there's you know counter options. And we're going to have to take advantage. Yeah, Kate, I, go ahead. I would say the same, I think. Within the Big Ten, they, they kind of remind me of Illinois with really good guard play um, at the guard position. I think also additionally with the way they press, I would say Ohio State, those two teams kind of combined. Um, but they're, they're unique in their own ways. Um, I think they run a lot of good stuff. I think they have, you know, they rotate quite a few post players in and out of the game when all those post players are kind of unique in their own way. Some can shoot, some don't shoot as much. Um, so I think the biggest thing is knowing our scout. Um, you know, it's easier when you're in the Big Ten and you're really familiar with teams and you get in these situations and you have a couple days to prep for a team like this. You really got to know your scout. You got to watch extra film. But um, like I said, really good guard play. Um, you know, they're going to want to create turnovers. They're going to get their hands in the passing lanes. It's going to be a physical game. You can't expect the refs to call, you know, fouls 94 feet. That's just not how it's going to go. Um, that's not how you want it to go. We don't want to get in a free throw shooting contest. Um, but yeah, they're very fundamentally sound. They're well coached. Um, and I expect it to be a really good game. You're in the front row. You know, Caitlin, you've said all along, by the time, especially you get to the second round, every game is dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, you've re reiterated that. We mm -hmm. saw Ohio State lost mm -hmm. today on their home court. You guys have been through that before. Is there any key when you're sort of the favored team, but there's a lot of pressure on you to sort of <clears throat> make sure the, the underdog, if you will, mm -hmm. doesn't get a foothold in the game, or do you think about it from that standpoint? I think coming out with a strong start will be really important for us, but I think that goes for any game. Um, you know, you want to come out and set the tone, but also our group has played in quite a few March Madness games where we didn't come out and set the tone, and we were able to take a breath and respond, and I think understanding, like, we're not going to win by 25 points. That's not what this is at this point. You know, it's going to come down to single possessions. You have to execute um, possessions. You need to get... Oh, boards, we need to not turn the ball over. Um, little things like that, and that's kind of what Coach Bluter's been preaching. But, yeah, I think our group knows better than anybody. This is a game that is it's going to be close. Every team that you play from here on out is a top 25 team. Um, doesn't really matter what number is next to your name. Um, it's going to be a great battle, and that's what makes this tournament so fun. you got to come ready to play. And like Kate said earlier, they do remind us of Georgia in a, in a, little, in a way. And... Georgia gave us a great battle. We only won by, I think, six points, or it was it was two points with like a minute to go. So just shows how, how important singular possessions are in, in these type of games. Mike? Uh, Mike Haas from the Cedar Rapids Gazette. For Caitlin, uh, with the 13 days between games, uh, that's a long time in basketball. Uh, was it any harder keeping your mind relaxed, uh, mostly ignoring the outside world, uh, all the talk about you and just everything that you know, surrounds you? <laughs> um, honestly, it was nice to have a couple of weeks off, especially after playing three games in three days at the Big Ten tournament. And um, 
I don't think it's like any different than what I've experienced over the last two years. I think I've been able to kind of, you know, step away and focus on my business and what that is. And that's on helping this team win. And um, certainly I know that spotlight's there. Certainly I know that pressure's there, but that's not anything you ever shy away from. I wouldn't want it any other way. And um, I think it's something this team has deserved and really earned over the course of the last two years, obviously with our run in March Madness. But I'm not sure a lot of people coming into this year would have thought we would be a one seed in this tournament and had the, had the year that we did with Lucy Mon and McKenna. I feel like a lot of people on our team has really stepped up into, into roles that maybe they didn't have last year, and I'm really proud of them. So I think the biggest thing you know, our team just needs to remember is you know, we worked for this. We've earned it. Sure, there's pressure, but that's not anything you shy away from. Like, you know, we've performed to that level all year long. Um, and, you know, these are some of the, mo the most fun moments of basketball right now. So just enjoy that and, and continue to rise to the occasion. Hello, good afternoon. Um, Remy Verano for the French TV. A uh, question to Caitlin. I know we're still in the middle of the, of the college tournament, mm -hmm. but um, thinking about the, the years uh, to come, about your future, what kind of a champion and what kind of a person and of a personality would you love to, to become? Oh, jeez. You asked the hard questions. It's you impressive. can't Google me on this. It doesn't exist uh, yet. So, <laughs> Did you Google it last night? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think the way I've gone about my college career is how I want to continue to live the rest of my life, whether it's playing professional basketball, whether it's, you know, my dreams outside of basketball. I think that's what has allowed me so much success as a basketball player is everything I do is the same way I live my personal life. I want to give a full effort. I want to, you know, rely on a team and other people around me. I know not everything can be done by myself, and I have a lot of people that support me, whether it's my teammates, whether it's my coaches, whether it's my family. And, um, you know, I have a lot of goals and aspirations in basketball and enjoying that. But at the end of the day, basketball isn't like the end all be all for me. I know, you know, I told my mom earlier this week, I know I can hold my head high whatever happens in this tournament because, you know, I've given my heart and soul to this program and so have my teammates. And I've loved every single second of wearing Iowa across my chest. and. Um, I think that goes for everything that I do in my life. I do it with, you know, 110% effort, and um, maybe at times that's bad, but, you know, that's just kind of how I go about my life, and I think that's what, you know, I'm going to continue to do as I become a professional working adult, um, and I think it's it would be the same for any other normal individual, too. In the middle, then? Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Kate, question for you. Caitlin had some nice praise for what she's learned from you over the last few years. I'm curious mm -hmm. if we can turn the tables a little bit. Obviously, you're two years older, had yeah. some college experience mm -hmm. before she was here, but over the last four years, what have you learned from Caitlin? Yeah, well, great question. Oh, gosh, Caitlin, she close your ears. Learned anything. Just <laughs> Um, no, I've learned a lot from Caitlin, and I feel really grateful that I've gotten to spend four years with her. Um, she just has come in since her freshman year and made everybody better around her, and I think that's what the greats do is they raise a level of competition every single day in practice. Um, and she had goals, and uh, I hadn't really, you know, like typically I was looking up to people who were older than me, and then, you know, somebody younger coming in with such a, you know, fiery mentality and wanting to win and I, I just loved it and you know sometimes you don't really think about looking up to somebody who's younger than you but I always you know admired her even since the day she stepped on campus because I knew she wanted to win and I I would take somebody like Caitlin who's fiery you know might snap on people over somebody who doesn't give a crap you know I would take that all day um, and so yeah and Caitlin's been there for me through so many aspects of my life mainly off the court and on the court and uh you know, she's just always going to have my back, and I appreciate that. And uh, I, I've said this before, but I, I want Caitlin in my foxhole. You know, I want her, if, if things go bad, you know, I want her to be right next to me because I know she's going to have my back, and I know she's going to give 110% and whatever it is. So um, I do really appreciate that about her. Hello, Lucas Tua for French Television again. Uh, question for Caitlin. Uh, for you, what are the, the priorities about uh, the future and the development of women's sports? Mm. Well, I think the first thing is it's hard to kind of think about the future when I'm in this moment right now. So I would say like that's my main focus is being here, being in this moment. Obviously, I know the future is going to come very quickly within the next month. And um, I think for myself, I think the biggest thing, like I've said all, even throughout this year, is like I still feel like the, my game can grow so much. I feel like I can still improve a lot. But... Like you said, like I think women's sports in general are growing so much, and that's so cool. As you see, it's like all over the world. Women's sports are really on the rise, whether it's women's basketball, whether it's soccer, whether it's volleyball. You can go down down the line of every 
you know, a women's sporting event that is growing, the attendance numbers are growing, the viewership is growing, and if I can be a small part of that, you know, that's really special and that's really unique, and I want to do whatever I can to, you know, help move that along and help inspire young girls to maybe, you know, dream to do whatever they want to do, and um, I guess that's the biggest thing is continue to, you know, enjoy these moments and smile and inspire young people to, you know, want to be just like us because they're going to be the next generation that keeps continuing to move this thing forward. Holly? Holly wrote ESPN. Hi. Um, just wondered, you, you've both referenced being hard on each other and helping each other raise the level of competition. I can remember when Beth yells at me to get better at my job <laughs> frequently. Can you share an anecdote with us of a fight you remember or a moment you remember that's like, come on, Kate, you got to do this, or come on, Caitlin, you got to do this? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to think. Summer scrimmages, me and Kay are never on the same team. Never. So <laughs> there's a lot in summer. We always play pickup like three times a week in the summer, and like me and Kate are never on the same team because it might be unfair for the other team. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But like me and Kate get into it, and like we bicker back and forth. There's never, we don't ever punch anyone or <laughs> punch each sure. other. Um, but like we'll go back and forth, and I think that just speaks to like how badly we want it. Like it's a summer scrimmage, really, at the end of the day. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter who wins, it doesn't matter who scores what, but like we want our teams to win that badly that it gets super competitive. And it's honestly not even just me and Kate, like all the girls get super competitive, but um, I, I would say we're probably the two biggest culprits and like it's like Kate's team versus Caitlin's team. So that's kind of how it goes. But um, once we like step off the court and walk down after practice is over from the practice gym, like it's all fun and games. Like we just laugh, we giggle. And I think that's the best thing about being a competitor. You can separate the two things. And um, that's what I love about Kate is like, I hate when she beats me at things, and she definitely hates when I beat her at things, and that's how it should be. That's what pushes you to get better, and um, if you don't have that competition, I don't really know how much you're going to be able to grow and, and improve in your own ways. we got time for two more questions. We'll go here in the front, and then to Scott Dockerman. Uh, Ten rounds, U92 radio is a question for Caitlin. So I couldn't help yesterday but notice the uh, you know, large amount of people that wait for all of you guys to get signatures, pictures, meet you. you know, when you look back, at your time in Iowa, I know you said you're focused on the game, but with it being your last game, what do you hope your legacy has been through your four years here? Well, I think, I hope we inspired a lot of people. I hope we brought a lot of people joy, whether it's young girls, young boys, older men and women, um, and I think we have. I think we've touched generations across the board, and I think also um, you'll see our legacy, whether it's me and Kate's or whether it's the other girls in the locker room, I hope it can, you continue to see it for years and years to come. I hope, you know, fans continue to support this program. Obviously, they have before, you know, I arrived on campus, before Kate arrived on campus, but obviously it's on a whole different level than it is now, and I hope they continue to support this program because what Coach Bluter has been able to build here has been really special, and, you know, we've been lucky enough to be a part of it and have a lot of wins with her, but... You know, there's been a lot of girls in the locker room that have contributed this year that maybe it's their first time and they're going to be here next year. So I think continuing to support them is very important. But also I hope there's a lot of young boys and girls that grow up to, you know, play basketball, play soccer, play whatever they want. And they can say, like, the Iowa women's basketball team was the team that really inspired me to go after my goals and my dreams to do what I want to do. And because I think me and Kate would say, like, we had those people growing up. And I know for Kate, that's exactly what it was. She grew up with an Iowa women's basketball poster glued to her bedroom ceiling. That's how much she loved this program and wanted to be a part of it. So um, I think it's like we've got to live out our dream, and I hope at the same time we're able to inspire others to dream too. Scott, last question. Kind of along those same lines for both of you, what's it? This is the last, tomorrow's the last time you're walking out of Carver Hawkeye Arena with that uniform on. What's it meant to you to have that, to, to wear that for your duration of your career? I feel really lucky and honored mm -hmm. to be able to wear Iowa across my chest every single day. And uh, it's, like Caitlin said, it was a dream of mine as a little girl um, to play for Coach Bluter and to spend six years here. I mean, that's rare nowadays. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it just is. But I feel really lucky that I've had the opportunity. I mean, I tore my ACL my freshman year, and it, it just kind of led me to this moment right now. And you don't really know why you tear your ACL in the moment, but I got another year to play here with these girls right now, and I just feel super grateful. And um, there's just a sense of pride that you get whenever you put on your uniform, run out to 15,000 screaming fans, and my family comes to every single game and to get to see them in the stands and then do 
that with your best friends every single day, I just feel extremely honored. And I, I could never say thank you enough to Coach Bluter and the coaching staff for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, I would say all the same. It's crazy how fast my, my four years have gone. I feel like it was just freshman year and I was playing in front of nobody. And now we're running out to sold out crowds, whether we're here or whether we're on the road. And, um, you know, I don't know if I would have been able to have the success that I do and that our team does if I wasn't playing for Coach Bluter. She's really allowed me to be myself. Um, she's never taken anything away from me and held me back from anything. Um, and I'm really grateful for her. I'm grateful for all our coaches, but also I've had really good teammates that have allowed me to be me too. And, um, you know, I wanted to play for this school because I love the state of Iowa. I love representing the state of Iowa. Um, my family was really close. I don't think my family has missed many games in my career. And um, I remember running out to our first sold out crowd and like I got the chills and now I get to do that every single night. And that's never anything that has got old. Um, and I think, I don't know, I mean, it'll take a while for this to set in of this really being my last game in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Um, but just really grateful and thankful, thankful to our fans, the way they support women's basketball um, and want the game to grow. And, you know, I know when I take off the jersey, whenever my last game is, I can, you know, hold my head high and reflect back on a lot of great memories inside this place. All right, Kate and Caitlin, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we'll go right to questions for Coach Bluter. Kyle? Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. We asked uh, Caitlin and Kate if there were any uh, teams that you guys have faced that, that kind of are similar to West Virginia. I think it was uh, Illinois because of their guard play, Georgia, uh, Penn State, and Ohio State. Uh, first off, do you agree with those teams? And then kind of is there anything that you can take away from those previous matchups that you point out to your team about, hey, we did something well in this game that, that West Virginia is going to do, and here's some things we didn't do well in that game that, that West Virginia can do? Yeah, I, I agree with Ohio State. I think they're similar to this team and the pressing. Um, and, you know, we handled Ohio State's press well. We handled Penn State's press well. So that's going to be the goal tomorrow because they are very, very good. Um, very good at creating. I mean, they force 24 turnovers a game. Um, we cannot afford to turn the ball over that many times. They count on it, and they get easy scores off those turnovers. So we have to do a good job of taking care of the ball. Right here in the front. Hi, Tanner Mads, U92 Radio. Uh, you know, obviously the goal will be to not turn the ball over, but, you know, many teams go in with that mindset, and they still – get turned over. If West Virginia is able to turn you over that many times, is there other things that you can do to kind of make up for those turnovers? I mean, threes are greater than two. You know, I mean, that's really right. Like, it's about possessions. And if you turn the ball over, you're in trouble. I mean, possessions are so important. Um, but, you know, if we control possessions, we're the number one team in the country in points per possession. So uh, we have to do a good job on the boards and we have to do a good job valuing the ball. Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. You've played uh, two teams from the Big 12 in Kansas State and Iowa State. Is there anything that you can take away from those matchups that you might try to emulate in this one, or is it a completely new challenge? I think it's a new challenge. I, I mean, 
Uh, you know, we played those teams such a long time ago. I've watched their films against West Virginia, but again, those were a long time ago. I think our team is different. The last time we beat Kansas State, we didn't have Hannah Stolke. She wasn't available. She was unhealthy at that point. So, um, you know, hopefully having her um, will help us. Kyle? We talked with the West Virginia head coach, Mark Kellogg, and he mentioned that he feels like they're a team that they can play a slower game if they need to. They can, they can play a little bit faster as well. Is that, is that something that you see from them, that they can kind of do both those things? They can excel if, if you find yourselves in either type of game? Oh, I agree. I think that they can change up their press to do whatever they want, speed you up or slow you down. So um, they do a really good job with that. Over here on the left, Steve, just a second. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, I think uh, during the first round, 31 out of 32 higher seeded teams won. Meanwhile, on the men's side, you see upsets happening and all this hoopla over that. Um, and of, of those 31 teams, 16 of them played on their home court. Do you think it's time for the women's tournament to reconsider awarding two home games to the top 16 teams? I don't think so. I, I don't think we're there yet. Um, we tried it. I've been around long enough that we did try that for a while. It was very unsuccessful, and that's why we abandoned it. Went back to this. We tried eight games at a neutral site, um, or eight teams at a neutral site, and it didn't work. Um, I think it is a huge advantage to the top 16, but maybe they deserve it because they worked on, you know, did it during the year. So maybe they deserve it. You're going to give up a crowd like this and a television, you know, experience like this in favor of going to a neutral place? You know, I don't think so. Scott, uh, one second. Hi, Scott Docterman with The Athletic. I wanted to ask you about Kate Martin's impact on this program since the day she walked in. She talked about learning from Megan, learning how to become a good teammate when she had an ACL to now where she's seems to be one of the greatest captains you've ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, what's been her impact and what's her legacy? She truly is one of the best captains I've ever had. I mean, I put Sam Logic up there, Kate Martin. Um, what makes Kate so tremendous is she works so hard all the time. So she's, de you know, by, she demonstrates, you know, the, the level of play that you want out on the court. But she's also communicating. She's our best communicator on the floor, whether she's pumping people up or whether she's, communicating, you know, defensive calls and skills, that sort of thing. So um, she's the first person that will hold people accountable. Um, and she's also the first person that will pat everybody on the back when they need it. And she builds people up. I think that's the biggest thing about a leader is when you can make the people around you better. And Kate Martin has done that. And uh, she's going to be a fabulous coach. I'm not going to want to coach against her because uh, she's going to be really, really good in time. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. Um, obviously not a ton of time to prep for West Virginia. I'm sure you've been doing it for a couple of days now. How much of, of a focus point is transition defense, and how tough is that to practice transition defense in just a, kind of a one- or two-day window? Yeah, you're not going to practice that today and be ready for it. I mean, you have to practice that all year long. Um, it has to be part of who you are. I mean, it, you just are not going to get better in an hour and a half practice of something like that. So it's something you better start working on last June, July, August, October, you know. Kyle. We talked about, you know, how West Virginia's defense can lead into their offense, but when they get into the half court, just what things do you see from them on their half court offense that could be a challenge for you guys? Just how fast they are going downhill. I mean, they're extremely fast. Um, you know, Jordan and JJ are incredible. Um, they, you know, I think feed off each other really well, but they are very quick going downhill. I think Lauren Fields is an excellent spot up three point shooter. So, I mean, you got your post Kylie that can come out and hit threes too. So, um, you know, defensively, it's tough to match up with them just because of their speed. Scott, Lisa, sometimes when you're going through the moment, it's hard to stop and smell the roses and think about the things, but. Uh, you've coached through a ton of senior days, seen a lot of great leaders here exit the program. How do the ones on this team, you know, how do you feel knowing that tomorrow is the last time they're going to wear Iowa, an Iowa uniform on this court and the impact that they've made, which is, seems to be obviously profound? Yeah, their impact has been amazing. And it's not only an impact on our program, 
It's an impact on the entire state of Iowa. It's an entire, you know, our community, our university. I think women's basketball nationally. I truly believe that this team has elevated the play, the enthusiasm, the excitement for women's basketball across the country. I am not thinking about tomorrow being their last game. I, I can't. Like, if you start thinking about that and focusing on that, you're not focusing on the task at hand. So that's something I'll think about after the game, but it's not something that I really want to prepare myself for now. Uh, right here in the front. Here in the front. Uh, Tanner Matthew, 92. I asked uh, Caitlin this right before, you know, when it is all said and done, what would you define her legacy as, whether for this program or you touched upon it, the state or women's basketball in general? For, for Kate Martin specifically? Uh, Caitlin, sorry. Caitlin. Oh, Caitlin. I mean, Caitlin, I mean, goodness, she's the face of women's basketball I mean, across the country right now. And so absolutely she's elevated this game. And, I mean, she really creates a lot of buzz. A lot, you know, whether it's good or whether it's bad, it's, it's a buzz out there. And... Uh, I think she's taught you know, people that they can be passionate about this game, competitive about this game, and they don't have to hide their feelings. I think there's a whole lot of little boys and girls that are playing basketball right now because of her, because of watching her play and her inspiring you know, the next generation of, of basketballers. Go ahead right here. Hey, Coach. Forgive me. I was in the locker room, so if I ask something that's repetitive, um, I, I apologize for that. But... I was asking Caitlin about this. When you're a real guard-dominated team, and I'm not shortchanging your post game at all, but you've got so much experience on guards, is it is it easier in some ways to prepare for another team that's guard-dominant, or does it really make much difference? I don't know if it makes a whole lot of difference. I haven't thought about that. Um, and I do think our post play was good yesterday. I mean, even without, with, with Hannah going 0 for 2 and not playing many minutes, we were 11 for 16 from the field uh, with our post play. So I think they did a nice job. Um, but... I mean, certainly when you talk about Iowa, you talk about our guards right now. Steve? Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, yesterday in the Princeton-West Virginia game, Princeton actually had fewer turnovers than West Virginia in the first half and more points off of turnovers and uh, more fast break points. And we know what happened in the second half. So how important will it be for your team not to play a great 10 minutes uh, against that pressure, not a great 20 minutes, but a great 40 minutes. Yeah, I think every game you play this time of year, you're playing a great, against great people. I mean, West Virginia has a 21 net. I mean, they are a really good basketball team. I think that they're um, underseeded or whatever you want to say about that. I think there should be uh, really like a seven or a six right now or a five, you know, possibly. I mean, uh, I'm not on the committee, so I can't make those calls, but I was really surprised that they were an eight seed. And I'm sure they were, and I, they have something to prove about it. But um, I think anybody you play now, you've got to be locked in for 40 minutes or, you know, you're going to go home. So that's the goal. And, and you're right. They, you know, I think it hurt when Jordan got into foul trouble a little bit in the first half. I think, you know, she's the front of that press, the kind of two-headed monster up there, and she's that, you know, one of the one of the – principal parts of that. Scott. I wanted to ask you about physical play and, and the challenges it could present for you if, if uh, the depending on the way it's called, and I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm just saying yeah. like balls and strikes. Um, if, it's, um, if it's called loose and there's not a lot of fouls, um, how, do you, how do you keep Caitlin focused and not maybe getting into – you know, yesterday she just seemed to be a little mm -hmm. out of character and yeah. how do you keep her kind of focused and not worrying about other yeah. things yeah um caitlin and i had a really good talk this morning i think she's gonna be great tomorrow i really do i have full faith in that um she got frustrated with herself with the situation last night and she can't she's too much of a veteran to let that bother her she knows that a lot of times whistles are fall, you know swallowed this time of year but hey, there was 57 free throws shot between West Virginia and Princeton. That's a lot of free throws and a lot of calls. So that game, they didn't really swallow their whistle, in my opinion. Got time for one or two more. Any, any other questions? Go ahead. Coach, you mentioned just how tough these games are, really, from the first round. But definitely, I feel like the second round now are incredibly tough. And, and Caitlin mentioned you, you can't go into this game thinking, hey, you're, we're going to win comfortably. It is going to go down possibly last mm -hmm. possession. 
the confidence I guess you have in, in the way you guys execute at the end of games, because that seems to be a huge difference maker at, at this time of the year. Yeah, I mean, we practice our end of game situations. I mean, often, uh, I'm not gonna say every day, but often we did it in the shoot around yesterday. Um, you know, I just feel like with a player like Caitlin, you're never completely out of a game because uh, she can do some amazing things at the end of games. We've all seen it over and over again. So, um, but yeah, I mean, end of game situations are very important, both offensively and defensively. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you, coach. Thanks.